Why, hello there. Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how we completely transform this entire garage floor from this to this, keep on watching. Let's get started. As you can see, this garage floor has been well weathered over the last few years. Yeah, apparently it's taken quite a beating from all the cars driving on it, and the paint that's actually still there is literally flaking off and just needs to be completely removed. But first, I always recommend before applying an epoxy to a concrete substrate to make sure you don't have any type of moisture issues. And that's why we're gonna do a moisture test. All you have to do for a moisture test is abrade the surface slightly, then take a piece of visqueen, a couple pieces of tape, leave it there for 24 hours, come back. If you have some type of dampness or discoloration in the concrete, you know there's too much moisture in the concrete. If it's completely dry, as you can see right here, we're good to go. So the most important part of an epoxy garage floor project is the prep work. And for the prep work, we want to make sure we have proper adhesion between the existing floor and the new epoxy. There are two processes that I'm gonna go over. One would be actually cleaning the surface with a degreaser with applying a recoat primer to the surface letting that dry, and then going over this entire surface. However, I also wanted to give you a second option as to shot blasting. Shot blasting this entire surface so we have a perfectly raw concrete surface so we can ensure that we have proper adhesion in two different formats. One is a lot easier than the other, but let's get to it. This cleaner and degreaser from rust actually works extremely well, so well that I actually did this on my very first epoxy floor project, and that floor was even older and in rougher shape than this one. This solution is meant to be a one-to-one -one ratio with water, and all I have to do is take a stiff bristle brush to the surface, let it soak in, then spray it off with a hose, and guess what? Let it dry and proceed to the recoat. This is option number one, and in all honesty, the easier option. Now the recoat really does make life so much easier because it eliminates sanding, grinding, or even shot blasting. But I specifically didn't want to go down this route with this specific project because the existing paint that was already on there was in such bad shape I did not trust anything that would go on top of this and I wanted to completely remove that paint before I did anything with the epoxy. As we move on to the grinding portion, if you do decide to go this route, just make sure you have a proper respirator, ear protection, eye protection, knee protection, and so forth. That's a lot of protection. But you wanna look out for yourself and you certainly don't want to breathe any of this stuff in, I assure you. In order to grind down as closely to the wall as possible, I'm using a diamond cup wheel with a dust shroud. Now the dust shield is extremely beneficial in this type of work because if you didn't have that, this entire room would be as dusty as the Sahara Desert. That's pretty dusty. I work around the perimeter of the entire room trying to get as close as possible to the walls, to the trim, and all the unique things in this garage. There's a nice large expansion joint at the front of the garage, and even if that area is gonna be seen on the outside, I'm not applying epoxy to it, but I will be treating it properly. So, this is our shot blaster, including with our actual vacuum system that we connect it to, and of course, the shot. Now this is small steel beads that are actually gonna be penetrating and hitting the concrete and actually abrading the surface, then shooting back up into it and getting sucked into our shop back. So, first things first, let's fill it up and see how well this thing takes care of all the dirt and grime and paint left behind. There are many different types of shop blasters out there, but you can normally find some type at your local tool rental shop. As far as prep goes, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is fill your machine up with shot, then connect your vac system to the shot blaster, and guess what? As long as it has power, we're ready to rock and roll. 
make sure to wear some eye protection and go ahead and start blasting. Now the beauty of this machine is how satisfying this machine can be from the very beginning. As you can see, just by dragging it across, it immediately transformed a very old, ugly, sad garage floor into something very clean and a perfect surface to apply our epoxy to. Now with this machine, you can control the amount of shot that's being blasted onto the surface at one time, but the real variable is the speed in which you actually apply it to. Obviously this is in a bit of fast forward motion, so I am walking a lot slower than this. Keep that in mind. These steel beads come out so quickly that it just completely transforms the look and removes any old paint as well as the dirt and grime that's on the concrete itself. Now in some areas you do have to take multiple passes and in the very near future you'll see how I go over the entire surface multiple times just to ensure we have as clean of a surface as possible. A lot of professional epoxy floor companies use shot blasters mainly because it's dust free. That's the beauty of the shot blasting system is that it kicks up very minimal dust and debris into the area which is very beneficial especially if you're in an enclosed space. With very large floor grinders it's going to be a dusty mess no matter how good your shop vac system is. Keep that in mind. Oh, and on this project, just as a side note, the first one I rented did die out on me at a certain point, so I rented another unit which was a bit larger, and the nice thing about this one is that it was self-driving, which made pushing a lot easier. But obviously this is a large device that not everyone can get, which is the reason why I showed the Rust-Oleum Recoat Primer option because it does serve the same purpose, which is to prep your existing floor for epoxy. Woo! As you can see, that was a lot of work, but guess what? We have an amazing surface to apply our epoxy to. First things first, we gotta do a bit of prep around here as well as clean up. So let's do that and then we'll get to the epoxy. After I do a quick sweep of the entire space, I figure out where my joint is gonna be between where the epoxy stops right underneath the garage door. Now I set a couple pieces of tape on the back side of the door so I know exactly where the garage door covers. Then I mark a couple lines an inch away from where the tape is, take my string line, snap a line perfectly across that area, and guess what? We have a nice straight line where our epoxy will end. At this point we could just put a piece of tape on the outside and then apply our epoxy up to the tape, but in all honesty, I prefer a beefier edge, especially when you consider the amount of cars that's going to be coming on and off of this surface for years and years. That's why I'm building a nice little trough for the epoxy to fill in, and therefore you're going to have a much beefier edge at that point because that is going to be your weak point if you don't provide a bit more strength at that seam. At this point, I can take my vacuum and just vacuum up all of the dirt and debris over this entire area and then proceed to a bit of filling. Let's be honest, this is a garage floor and therefore there are going to be some unique gaps and cracks along the way. So what you always want to do, especially with the rust products, is to use their concrete patch and repair kit. This is a two component, two to one mix ratio. And the nice thing about this is the fact that it's a bit runny when you mix it all together, which comes in very handy because you want it to flow into the crack and let it fill the crack in the void. Therefore, it will actually settle evenly and sometimes you can actually even get away without sanding it. I would recommend sanding if there's a buildup. At this point, we can start prepping for epoxy. And this basically means just going around with some painter's tape and applying it to any trim or any other surface that you don't want the epoxy to be applied to. At least the stuff that's located on the floor. But guess what? At this point, it's now time for our epoxy. For this project, we are using rust Rock Solid Metallic Floor Coating Kit. Each container contains a two-part epoxy mix a roller, some etching to actually treat the concrete if we didn't abrade it first, and of course some directions. 
For mixing, slice the clear plastic bag off and then take the two part components and roll up one side till the seam in the middle bursts, which for some reason is extremely satisfying. I don't know, is it just me? Let me know in the comments below if that actually is satisfying to you as well, because for me, it is. After you shake, shake, shake your bag for at least two to three minutes, you can then proceed to dumping the container into a clean bucket. And personally, I always highly recommend trying to empty out the entire container into the bucket by squeezing the plastic all the way down. And from the very get-go, you can see how unique and different this pigment is and how amazing it's going to look on this floor. But first, we need to apply our seal coat which is why I'm using a squeegee to squeegee on this first coat of epoxy. I also use a three inch chip brush to get all of the small corners and side areas where it's just difficult for the squeegee to get into. Now you want to do this step before you apply your final flood coat because our concrete is very porous and if we just apply our flood coat to this surface directly, it's gonna really soak up and we're not gonna get enough coverage out of our epoxy. By sealing up the pores of this concrete not only allows you to use less material in the long run, but it also gives you a perfect base to work upon and there's less likelihood of any concrete discoloration in your final product after you apply your finish. Oh, and please keep in mind if you do apply the Rust-Oleum Recoat Primer, that basically acts as your seal coat and therefore you can avoid this step entirely if you do that. Huge thank you to Rustoleum for sponsoring this week's project. I absolutely loved working with their product on my own garage, and my brother loved my garage floor so much that he said, Brent, you have to redo my garage floor as well. And guess what? We reached out to Rustoleum and they couldn't wait to work with BYT again on this project. And like always, if you do like the products seen in this video, I will make sure and leave a link in the description box below. As you can see, we have a perfectly sealed driveway and it's ready for our flood coat. Now with this kit, it does come with a roller, but I really enjoy a foam roller when applying epoxy, mainly because of the fact that you can guarantee you're not gonna get any lint into the system. Also, again, make sure you pick up a three inch chip brush. It's just a lot easier to get around all the tight knit corners around here first, and then your roller. So. Let's start mixing. Since the flood coat is the same exact material as our seal coat, it's the same exact process. Take the bag out, pop the bag, mix it up for a few minutes, then dump it into a bucket and start applying it to the surface. I do highly recommend cutting in all of my edges first with a chip brush and then proceeding to dumping out the majority of the contents on the floor and spreading it evenly across the surface. There are two specific steps that you want to take into account when rolling the material onto your garage floor. Number one, just make sure you have a nice even coverage over the entire garage floor. And once you have that taken care of, you can then proceed and come back and start swirling around unique shapes. It's different, it's a metallic. You have a really unique ability to transform the entire look of your garage just by swirling the product around of it. Play with it, change it up. If you don't like it, you can always go back to it and maneuver the epoxy in different ways, depending on the style that you want. That's what's so fun about this product is that the metallic itself really adds a lot of depth and character to any space. And the fact that you can change the flow and the direction of the pigment in such an easy way makes it very versatile and very eye appealing in the long run. The other nice thing to keep in mind when applying your seal coat is the fact that because you applied your seal coat, it really seals in cracks. I had a few small minor cracks in my concrete and therefore because I sealed it first, your flood coat will have an easier time filling up those cracks and hopefully make them completely disappear. 
Now the directions do state that the floor should be ready to be walked upon within an eight hour period. However, depending on temperature and relative humidity, those may change and that was my mistake. I touched it after nine hours, it felt completely dry, and therefore I walked straight across it, but all my shoe prints were left behind. Luckily, all you have to do is sand them out, and because we are applying a clear coat over the top of this, it's not a big deal whatsoever. As for our front edge, I make sure our void is fully submerged in epoxy and then proceed to removing the tape before it's fully hardened. I do let it set up for a few hours before I remove the tape, but as you can see, there was some bleed over due to the fact that this is just painter's tape, so maybe next time I'll use some duct tape. But keep in mind that if you do have some bleed over and it's still wet, you can easily use some denatured alcohol to remove the excess epoxy. At this point in time, let it dry overnight and guess what? It's now time for a clear coat. Now this is the rock solid clear garage floor coating and it actually just provides an extremely beautiful high gloss finish while also providing added durability for our garage floor. As far as mixing goes, same exact process with the epoxy, combine both products, mix it up for a few minutes, and then pour it into a bucket. However, the one difference with this one is that we're going to be adding an anti-skid additive to the mix so we can ensure we have plenty of grip strength when this floor gets wet. I personally did not add this to my garage and I have no issues with it whatsoever when it's dry. However, if it gets wet, it is quite slick. Keep that in mind. As for application, I do cut in all corners with a three inch chip brush as I had done before, as well as a foam roller and evenly distribute the epoxy throughout the entire floor area. Now, in all honesty, you don't have to apply this to your surface. You can just keep the metallic as is and use that as your garage floor. But for this project, we are trying to go with the most durable finish possible and providing a nice, even clear coat over our entire metallic floor coating is the best option possible when it comes to durability. One thing to keep in mind is the fact that both products are actually high sheen and therefore it is sometimes a bit difficult to see where you applied the clear coat and where you didn't. One way to easily clear this up is to actually take a tape measure, string it across the entire area, and note that as a guide to indicate exactly where you're going to be applying the epoxy to. Then just move your tape measure five feet and proceed with the next section. As I previously discussed, I did walk through this entire space while it was still a little soft, and therefore those areas that you see right there are actually areas where I sanded. However, applying a clear coat over the top after I sand those areas with 320 grit sandpaper means bye bye marks be gone. You obviously want to work your way to the outside of the garage and once you get to the edge, go ahead and apply a bit of finish to that front lip with a chip brush and let it dry overnight. I want the outside strip of concrete to have a nice finished look, which is why I'm gonna apply some wet look high gloss concrete sealer by Sealcrete. Now I'm just applying this to the bare concrete and just make sure you're not spraying this onto your beautiful epoxy floor. Then once you're done spraying, rip off the tape and move on to your vinyl wall base. Now you obviously don't have to do a vinyl wall base, but it's a nice added feature because it's cheap and easy to install, which is always appreciated. But guess what? Once we have that fully installed, we are done. I absolutely love how this garage floor turned out. As you can see, the pigment in this epoxy truly stands out and it completely transforms an old, sad, ordinary garage floor. If you don't remember what it looked like, here you go. Yeah, that's what it used to look like. And now look at it. What an amazing transformation that can take place in just a few days and it completely transforms the look and feel of any garage floor. A huge thank you goes out to rust -Oleum for all their amazing support on this project. If you are interested in purchasing this product, I will leave a list in the description box below as well as how many kits I used for this entire space. 
I love a good restoration project and this certainly counts as one. And as always, this is truly one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah.